Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about the last half of the War of the Realms book. Uh, this will cover Venom number 14, Venom number 15, and then War of the Realms 4, 5, and 6. So we got a lot to cover today. I have a lot of the books here. I actually bought a lot more tie-ins uh, to this book than what I'm going to talk about today. But uh, there was just too many, and I just want to focus on the Venom stuff for the most part. And I'm sorry, I know last time we played Marvel vs. Capcom, and we had like, you know, I was kind of doing two things at once. But I got a lot going on today, and I was like, I, I can't do the video game thing. But I do really want to talk about this while it's fresh in my head, because I did just recently, you know, reread some of these books to kind of keep it fresh in my head so I could do this episode. Because last time, I think it was episode 338, is when we talked about uh, Venom number 13 and the first half of War of the Realms, which was issues one through three, and then some of the tie-ins. So we're not going to talk about Punisher or the Spider-Man tie-ins, even though I own those. Uh, we're going to talk about just like the three main books, uh, you know, episodes or issues four, five, and six of War of the Realms, um, and then also issues 14 and 15 of Venom. And then there might be like one or two other books in here that have symbiote action in it that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one being uh, the War of the Realms Strike Force, The War Avengers. I can't remember if we talked about this in the last episode or not. So I was like, eh, you know, and I was trying to go through and watch it. But it was like a 37-minute episode. So I was like, all right, I'm trying to just find this issue. And I couldn't find it. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I feel pretty sure that we didn't talk about it. But there's not much to say other than this is basically like Captain Marvel and Sif and a, and a couple other characters teaming up to take the battle, um, you know, to uh, Laufey and all these, you know, the frost giants that showed up and all these uh, hordes of monsters that are attacking Midgard and uh, and all the ones that kind of got away. So Laufey and all of them, they're being handled by like Punisher, Wolverine, the Warriors 3, and people in New York. Uh, but then there's all these other, like, you know, monsters that are trying to divvy up the rest of the world. And uh, everything from like the Savage Land, you know, to Genosha, to everything is being attacked. And uh, it's, it's pretty awesome, actually. Um, and so in this issue, we do have Venom in here, but it's it's just the suit. So in the main Venom book, we have Eddie Brock, and he was given like a dream stone of some kind. And that dream stone is what he um, uses to, you know, create a new energy symbiote thing, like a dark magic symbiote. And we'll talk about that when we get to issue 14 of that. Uh, but this one is the actual symbiote itself, the one that separated from Eddie Brock at the end of Donny Cates' issue number 12. This issue is written by Dennis Hopeless, who I guess Hopeless was never really his last name, which I kind of figured. Um, uh, but now he's Dennis Hopeless. Hallam, I guess Hallam is his actual last name, and he's removing the hopeless part. I guess he's, uh, you know, getting older, probably, and he's like, you know what? I don't want to be Dennis Hopeless anymore. Um, I want to go by my actual name, I guess. I don't know. Uh, be careful when you choose pen names and stuff. Make sure it's something you really want to commit to uh, when you choose a pen name. But uh, anyway, so Dennis Hopeless Hallam, or Dennis Hallam now, um, and Kim Jacinto and Ario Anandito, is, uh, those are the two artists of this book. Um, so yeah, they got a good team. The art's actually really good. Starts off with this big action scene with Deadpool, and Deadpool's being pulled into the War of the Realms. He gets eaten by this giant like monster, and then uh, I think Namor finds him. Yeah, Namor finds him, cuts the, the sea creature open, and then Deadpool pops out, and then they have like a nice conversation. And he's getting recruited into this team called the War Avengers, uh, led by, I guess, Captain Marvel and Sif. Uh, Sif, I'm a really big fan of Captain Marvel, eh, and I feel like very few people write good dialogue for her but in this one she's actually written pretty good she's all right she's a she's very standoffish and very you know to the point uh but you know you you do need that archetype that type of character in this scenario to rally the troops together because uh you can't you know and they have to be rigid like sif is a little bit more rigid written in this one too uh because there's a lot at stake and so you know there's no room for joking no one's ready to put up with deadpool shenanigans uh so in this book what happens is the venom symbiote answered the call uh so even though it's separated from eddie brock it's like no i gotta get involved in this i gotta make sure that the world is safe so that eddie is safe and so it has its own reasons for joining this uh this you know group of avengers and it's just the suit uh, but it's talking and it's everything and so if everyone thinks it's just eddie brock and even uh, deadpool's like wait a minute this isn't the soldier version of venom so why is he on the team we need soldiers and they're like don't worry he, he'll do his job and uh you know and venom's kind of like I, I technically am that person uh you know i'm just not i don't have flash thompson with me but i'm still that same symbiote um but then he jumps into the battle and when the frost giants show up they actually uh you know they have this cool shot here with weapon h and venom being like you know dropped in to the battle 
and uh, this giant squishes Venom. So pretty much pounds him into the ground. Everyone's like, all right, he's done. Like Venom's gone. He's off our team. Uh, whatever host was in there is dead. And then boom, twist is there's no host. Uh, it's just the suit. And again, back in the first episode, I was wondering how this could be possible, how there was two Venoms running around. And it made the answer was right in front of me the whole time. And you guys let me know in the comment section. And I felt so dumb. I was like, of course, the suit doesn't have Eddie in it. And Eddie's, you know, made some you know, wish on a dreamstone or something. So uh, yeah, so then this suit, wraps around this frost giant and plucks right through his eyeball through the back of his head and kills him um so yeah so venom is really a great addition to the team but they're all fighting and then they get to a point where they find out that malekith is in new york and he's uh you know bringing the battle to the humans and they're like all right we got to take him out we got to we got to bring him down once and for all and uh once they do they show up i, th I think he's in new york um yeah once they do they show up venom jumps down to get you know to get his hands on him just like happened in uh, issue three of war of the realms so this is all the events leading up to the part in issue three of war of the realms which we talked about in the last episode where malekith stabs venom with his uh, sword and then absorbs the symbiote and then they teleport away together and that's pretty much where this book ends is where you know they lose venom in the battle but then they're like all right well we still got to move forward we still got uh battles to fight all around the world and it sucks that we lost one of our own so they kind of wrap it up a little too quickly in my opinion but it was still pretty good i i liked it overall i thought it was a nice you know nice balance of characters in there captain britain was pretty awesome uh black widow and winter soldier show up at a point in it um so yeah it was a pretty good team but it did wrap up a little too quickly it felt like they were building up to that venom moment and then after the venom moment they're just like all right we got like two pages to wrap this up it's like uh eh, maybe move the venom moment a little bit up a little so you can wrap the the story a little bit but of course you can't really wrap the story because it's got to go right into war of the realms you know like the next issue so uh we'll, we'll get into that that's issue four but before we get in there i want to talk about venom number 14. uh this is another tie-in issue written by colin bunn art by Ibon coelho the artwork's amazing you know i love Ibon's work i mean it just looks so fantastic and eddie brock has this rune that he's using a lot of you guys called him rune venom but he changes to like giant venom and to viking venom in this book uh basically he's finding out that his rage his pain and all the stuff and, and I love what Colin Bunn's doing he's referencing the stuff that Donnie Cates has been doing but he's also referencing other older continuity obviously Jack Lantern shows up so that's a nice reference to like the Flash Thompson you know era of Venom so there's a lot of really good stuff in here and this is what I like about Colin Bunn when he's on he's on uh, you know and his his run on the Flash Thompson Venom run was really good and you know I love the Remender stuff obviously too but I liked his I thought he did a lot of great stuff and especially with Mania and stuff so it's like you know, when he's on point, he's on point and he delivers really fun books. And that's what I like about him is that they're really fun. And so you have Venom here and the, you have the Roxxon Corporation is, you know, kind of involved and you see them more and more in the main book. Um, and Venom's like, all right, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take down these threats that are popping up. I'm going to fight these monsters and then I'm going to save people. And that's what I want to do. But uh, as he's doing this, he's getting all these memories like basically this rune stone is you know tapping into his brain uh, now that he's separated from the symbiote he's still trying to figure out who he is like you know which memories are real which ones aren't so this rune stone is like messing with him and it's making him remember times his father hit him times spider-man hit him and it's just trying to get him to get angry it just wants him to be full on angry all the time and that's why the witches also make a deal with jack-o-lantern and they give him like a rune stone and enhance his powers and they send him after venom and uh, and basically they're trying to manipulate venom this is all just to make venom mad so he's kind of like a puppet in a way and so is jack o lantern he's just like the bait for the puppet really and uh, but jack o lantern comes in on this like screaming flying you know pteranodon thing and uh, and eddie brock's fighting him and he's getting you know memories of the null creature and he's remembering everything that's been going on and it's it's you know eating at him he remembers the time where he was you know had cancer he's in the hospital so again these moments are fantastic i love what uh, iban is doing along with uh, colin bunn that they can tell the story they can fit venom into like a big crossover event and still tell venom stuff still make him the heart of the story i feel like this is the, the hardest thing with donny cates's book is when i read it is that there's just there's some moments in this book that you, we have not seen in the 12 whole issues of venom we have not seen at all from donny cates uh, but in these three issues from cullen bunn we get them 
And I love I love it so much. Uh, so anyway, Eddie Brock, you know, he's as he realizes he's getting mad, it's enhancing the power of the suit. He grows to a giant size, so he can kill these uh, frost giants. He does with ease. I love this shot here, where one tackles him from behind, and then he shoots like you know the symbiote spikes through him and kills him. Uh, so he kills a bunch of symbiotes, and then he gets lit on fire by Jack O' Lantern, and he burns down to the ground. And when he hits the ground, he decides to change the suit once again into Viking armor. So Eddie Brock is actually evolving the suit. He's evolving with his rage into new things and he even calls Jack O'Lantern out and says you know you get this runestone you get this power and look how limited you are you you only know how to be Jack O'Lantern you're just doing the same thing you always do but look at me I've done like three different things now because I'm evolving with this so you know and I'm, I'm better at using this than you are and I'm gonna take yours away from you and I'm also not gonna let that witch manipulate me anymore and uh, when the witch hears that she's like all right you know what I'm gonna sick you know Jack O'Lantern turn him on the town because somewhere in this town somewhere in New York in this area uh, you know, Eddie Brock's son, Dylan, is held somewhere, you know, safe. Uh, we know he's in Rex's little room and stuff. And he six, you know, the witch six jack-o'-lantern on that part of town and just like burn everything, burn the entire town. So that way, even if Eddie Brock wins somehow, um, his son is dead and then, we, you know, he's, he loses in the end. And so Eddie, you know, obviously is, is not a fan of that. And he rages out and he jumps into battle. Meanwhile, Dylan here is uh, starting to feel the heat from the fire in the surrounding neighborhood. Now we jump over really quickly to War of the Realms 4. I'm not going to talk too much about this, but I had to get the cover with Venom on it because <laughs> I just thought that was cool, where he's like a dog to Malekith. And that's really what this whole book is, I mean, at least for Venom fans. I mean, there's a lot that happens in here. It's, you know, there's the different sects of people who are like out there fighting different parts of the, you know, the realms and everything and guarding different gateways and everything, uh, like Punisher and, and uh, Freja and all these characters. Uh, but they're all, they're all failing one by one, although Frank really is trying to stand his ground and he's trying to unite the others and you got ghost rider robbie ray as ghost rider uh standing up against them and you know all these other characters it's it's pretty awesome <laughs> and uh the battle's great and then you have freja you know trying to do her best and all these other characters uh doing what they can to protect that gate because they have the dark you know rainbow bridge whatever teleporter and they need to protect that because unfortunately for matt murdoch uh, he lost control of his rainbow bridge. He was there with the powers of Heimdall trying to protect everything and unfortunately his bridge collapsed. So Punisher and, and Freja and all these people, they have to protect this one bridge along with Ghost Rider and, and these other characters. So there's a lot at stake, there's a lot going on. Uh, but while this is all happening, you know, now Malekith has uh, he has the Venom symbiote and he's trying to forge it because he remembers when uh, Gore the God Butcher which is from way back in Jason Aaron's you know like first run or second run of the book of when he was writing Thor like five and a half years ago um, he had this character called God, uh, Gore the God Butcher and uh, and Gore had this um, you know sword that was like a necro sword it was like a symbiote forged into a sword and that's kind of something we saw with Null and it kind of ties into Null now um, and Donny Cates is like pulling that uh, history into like his background for a null which you know i'm fine with it's cool it's it's neat to see these stories and these threads picked up on um i just wish there was a little bit more eddie brock stuff and not just oh eddie brock has a kid and his whole life is all fake like that to me seems like the laziest thing you can do with eddie brock instead of actually telling real heartfelt stories with him and something that really challenges him as a character giving him a son that's a good challenge but the way they did it I just wasn't, you know, a fan of. So in this, you know, we're not getting a lot of Eddie Brock, but we are getting the suit. And the suit is now a lapdog to Malekith, which it doesn't like. It doesn't want to be used anymore. And it doesn't want to be used as a weapon against humanity. And unfortunately, it is being used by uh, Malekith that way. And uh, and meanwhile, all of, you know, like Odin and all these uh, different warriors <laughs> from Asgard, they've all teamed up with Iron Man. I think some of these dwarves were all given War Machine costumes. And Odin was given uh, actually uh, an Iron Man suit as well. So there's some things in here that I'm I'm like, ah, I guess it's cool, but it's also kind of goofy in a way, too. Uh, but you kind of buy into it because you're just like, yeah, it's comics, whatever. You're just trying to have fun with it. And Frank's here, and he's, you know, talking about his family and talking about the things he's lost, and he understands the loss that others are experiencing right now. Um, and then he sees, like, the Destroyer's armor, and it kind of gives him a couple ideas. Uh, and then uh, also someone else who comes into the room gives them an idea. And then as you see, that person that came in uh, there when they were talking to Frank and stuff was Thor. And Thor now has the destroyer arm because his arm got cut off by Malekith. And so now he has the new, this destroyer arm, which just looks freaking awesome. Um, and uh, and he's not, you know, not worthy, worthy. Um, he, right now, he hasn't been for a while. That's why there was Jane Foster became like Thor for a little bit. Um, and so he's now uh, Thor, God of the Unworthy. That's what he calls himself. And it's pretty neat because that all comes back into play 
in the final issue. So right now he's just got his axe and he's got a hammer, but he doesn't have Mjolnir. And Mjolnir is still somewhere in the ethos, somewhere that, uh, you know, is out of his reach, somewhere that he can't lift. And uh, he's continuing his journey to find it. Venom number 15 by Colin Bunn. This is the end of the three-part Venom storyline. So this is the last issue that ties in with the book. Ivan Coelho, again, doing the artwork. But Alberto Albuquerque and Roberto Poggi uh, come in and fill in for some of the pages on here. I think primarily towards the end. Uh, but you have these great pages. So it picks up right where we last left off in issue 14. And Dylan is like waiting. He's like, Eddie, where are you? Still doesn't know Eddie's his father yet. But uh, Eddie does know that Dylan is his son. So Eddie's trying to do everything he can to save his son. He creates like an axe. He creates weapons. He becomes the Viking Venom, and he goes right at uh, Jack O' Lantern and starts fighting him. But of course, as he's battling him, he realizes, you know what? This is what the witch wants. It wants us to fight each other. It wants us to kill each other. And I'm not going to do what she wants. I got to find another way. And while he's thinking about all this, he's obviously in battle, and Jack O' Lantern is getting the upper hand on him. And Jack O' Lantern knocks Eddie down and leaves him uh, for dead. But at this point, Eddie looks up and sees, you know, civilians, innocent people that are trying to escape, and they can't. These fire demons are surrounding. Them. there's you know these other demons and monsters are surrounding them and Eddie's like I can't I can't what am I gonna do he's like I can save myself I can go save Dylan maybe with the suit but I'm just gonna do exactly what the witch lady wants uh, what can I do there's got to be a better way and I think this is probably one of the mo most heroic moments for Eddie Brock in comics that we've seen in some time. Even counting the Mike Costa stuff, um, even though I liked some of the stuff in there, I don't think anything comes nearly as heroic and selfless as this right here. Uh, what Eddie Brock decides to do is he realizes what the suit is doing and he starts remembering. You know what? I'm going to remember who I am. I'm going to remember truly who I am. I'm going to look at my mistakes, the things I never admitted to myself. I used my rage all these years to make me the victim, to make me feel bad about myself and try to get others to feel bad for me. But really all of that is because of actions I took. I need to own up to my responsibilities. I need to own up to my mistakes. And I was so happy to read this. I was so happy to see Eddie Brock take that move and take that turn. And I hope it's something Donny Cates continues with as we move forward through Absolute Carnage uh, because this was such a great moment. He actually takes the suit using the runestone and he sends it out to basically wrap around the, the citizens, uh, the people that are hurting, the people that are about to die. He sends the suit out to protect them uh, away from him. And he just keeps like one part so he can kind of be in control of all of all of that happening. And he turns them all into Viking Venoms. And there's this great line that says, we are Venom. He literally sa sacrifices himself, he's willing to, uh, to save these people and send out this new rune suit to protect all of them and get them to safety. And he even says, like, I bet you that witch didn't see that coming. And uh, he goes, but it's time for me to act like an Asgardian. And I've only known, ever known or seen one Asgardian in action. And this is what he does. And he picks up his axe and he uses it to summon uh, a lightning strike on Jack O'Lantern and, and take him down and cause him to separate from his runestone. So, uh, yeah, so when Eddie Brock walks up to him, He's no longer Venom. The rune suit is gone. Uh, you know, those people got saved. And Eddie Brock is just Eddie Brock. And he walks up and, uh, you know, Jack O'Lantern here is like, look, I'm just a nobody. I'm actually not the real Jack O'Lantern. I just found the suit. Um, and that's it. I'm not really him. So, uh, yeah. So, again, the witch is just being like, oh, we found a sap. You know, someone who will just do what we need him to do. And he'll help us get Eddie do what we need Eddie to do. Because we wanted Eddie to be like this creature of nightmares uh, and dreams and stuff and chaos for Malekith. And so we were trying to prime him and charge him up by getting him angrier and angrier. But unfortunately, he did something completely selfless at the end. And he negated the spell and then destroyed the suit and destroyed the runestone um, and uh, and proved, you know, them wrong and actually did something super heroic and super, super awesome. So I love this. I think gotta say if you don't have venoms 13 14 and 15 go buy them even if you don't buy the rest of war of the realm but you're a venom fan read these issues they're really really fun and i was really surprised that there were these big heroic moments in it from eddie brock uh, i wasn't expecting it and i'm so grateful that cullen bunn did that because i felt like that was a real push forward in eddie brock's development as a character of finally owning up to who because he's owned up a couple times before like when he had cancer and stuff but he's still in the hospital blamed peter parker and it wasn't until the very end that he was like all right i'll 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 own up to what I've done, but we only got like two pages of that. Here we got to at least enjoy it, him actually doing something selfless and owning up to his faults. And I thought that was great character growth. And that's something that's so impossible to do, to look at your own self and, and see the flaws you have and see the mistakes you've made and own up to them. And uh, that's why it broke the spell and it freed Eddie Brock and it sent these witches off, uh, you know, pissed off and stuff. Uh, and now, uh, you know, 
angry that they didn't get to uh, do what they wanted and create a new warrior for Malekith. And then at the end, Eddie Brock comes in. Like I said, the artwork changes. He comes in and sees his son. He's like, hey, you know, it's me. I'm, I'm going to keep you safe. You know, give me one of the guns and uh, we'll just sit here and we'll, and we'll, you know, basically we'll wait out the rest of this battle uh, because it looks like it's finally starting to wrap up uh so yeah i like that so eddie is you know here having a bonding moment with his son and then meanwhile the rune stone that jack lantern had somebody reaches over to grab it so maybe we'll see that again colin bunn is really good about stuff like that where he'll you know write something in a book and then he'll come back to it later on hopefully he'll get like a venom mini series again at some point like venomverse and edge of venomverse and those and venomized and all the stuff he did before i'd love to see him come back and do some kind of mini series where he touches on that runestone I, he might even be doing one of the absolute carnage books i can't remember but where, wherever he comes back I hope we see more of that runestone stuff because I think there's cool potential for storylines there, uh, especially now that Eddie knows how it works, uh, to see it fall in the hands of somebody who maybe is a good person, maybe is a bad person, maybe is both, or have been both at their point in their you know comic career or something. Um, I'd love to see who picked that stone up and where that story goes. War of the Realms number five is just more fighting. <laughs> it's so much fighting. Uh, you have actually uh, Matt Murdock at the beginning here, and he's looking out over the Rainbow Bridge. It's destroyed, and he's helping Thor get to, uh, you know, Idrisil, the big tree of life. And he says, look, you know, back in the day, um, Odin, he was actually bound and tied to that tree, and he was there for like nine days or nine nights. And when he came out of it, he was more, he was wiser. He was a, a he grew as a person. Because remember, Odin was like a slayer. He went around and slayed all the other nine realms. But then he became more compassionate, more understanding, more wise, and, uh, and saw that that was not the way to rule. And that was because he spent nine nights tied to Idrisil, uh, the, the life tree. And, uh, and so that's what Thor wants to do. He's like, look, I don't have nine nights. I only have like this one night, but we need to, you need to get me there. And I need you to ask, I need to ask you something, Matt Murdock. Now that you can hear the entire universe scream, I need you to ignore my screams and try not to save me because this needs to happen. So it starts off on like a really awesome note. Uh, and then it cuts to all the, you know, the different warriors fighting, uh, trying to protect their different, you know, areas uh, during this final battle. Um, Ghost Rider gets the one up on Enchantress, which was pretty cool. Um, you know, you know, Dr. Strange is running through with his ax and he's like slicing heads off in Ghost Rider's car. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of really fun stuff. A boulder is driving the car and stuff. Um, and then Spider-Man, obviously, he went off on his little elf quest and he's, you know, wrapping that up. And so it's him coming back into the fold uh, from his miniseries. And there's just all this great stuff. I really love this shot here. It's a blade, a bunch of warriors. And, uh, and actually, it's uh, Kazar from the Savage Land, and they're all jumping down to, like, join the battle. Um, and then again, you see the Roxxon company, um, Ape, or Gorilla Man or whatever, is uh, taking the fight to them, and they're fighting back, uh, him and all of his friends, and they're fighting back. I think some of the Young Avengers are there and stuff, and they're be basically taking down the, the guys who run Roxxon, who are kind of... Uh, you know part of this deal to like you know help uh, Malekith take over in, in exchange for getting like their own land of the planet and stuff so uh, yeah you have that storyline going on uh, but then you also have Wolverine in the Warriors 3 he's a member of the Warriors 3 and he's cutting through people uh, this book was just a lot of fun this was the dwarves I was telling you about that all got war machine armor so they're called the war machine dwarves and they're fighting with Iron Man against um, Laufey and the Giants in New York and the battle just, it, that's all this is. It's just like a big battle from beginning, middle, and end. It just keeps going, keeps going. Um, and uh, Volstag, even his spirit is connected to the Destroyer, and he's using the Destroyer to fight Curse. Uh, so a lot of great moments here. Not a lot of Venom stuff, but Thor does show up at the end to help join in the battle. But then we cut back to see uh, what it was like for him when he's bound to the tree and, you know, and he's burning and stuff. Um, and that's kind of where the book is ending is where Malekith says, Thor, I know you can hear me. You're, ta you're attached to the tree. I know exactly where you are, but you need to break free. I built this dome around us. I'm at Stonehenge and there's this protective dome around us and only a Thor can get in. Only Thor, only you basically can get in through this. So you can't bring your friends. You can't bring an army. Uh, it's just going to be me and all these monsters and these dark elves and we're going to just be waiting here to kill you. And if you don't come in the next, like, you know, couple hours or whatever, I'm going to kill your mom and dad with the symbiote sword, which he forged Venom. Uh, now he, you know, Malekith is actually wearing the symbiote and he's using it to create the symbiote sword um, and turn himself into a god butcher as well, like Gore was. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty tough. But right at the end there, uh, you know, she says, uh, you know, there's all these people looking around and, and uh, Frage is like, look, he, he made it clear that there's a curse around this place. Only Thor can come in. And she's like, but there must always be a Thor. Sometimes, though, 
there has to be more than one Thor. And then you get this little uh, teaser at the end where someone's picking up the hammer and you're like, what? What's going on? Uh, so that's what uh, that's where issue five ends. Before we get to issue six, though, I want to mention Thor number 14 because this has a lot of Venom action in it. Basically, like I said, at the end of the last issue, uh, there's multiple Thors. So uh, Thor decides to go through time and pull Thors from different generations. So back when he was like a Viking god, way back in the day, back in Jason Aaron's early days of the book, um, they recruit him. He's not worthy to lift the hammer yet, uh, but they still bring him into the battle. Uh, they also, this is when like the Fantastic Four show up and they're like, look, we got to recruit you. There's uh, something big's happening, so you need to come with us. Then there's the Thor that got pulled off the tree, off the life tree. Um, then there's the All-Father Thor from the future. So that's Thor when he's like basically Odin's age and he's like the All-Father. And then then you have Jane as uh, Jane Foster as Thor as well and she has a hammer that's from like a different realm from a war Thor uh, and so uh, so yeah there's a lot of multiverse stuff going on here and a lot of other realm stuff but yeah so all four of them team up and they basically are like well now the four of us can all ride in together and we can take down Malekith together because the four of us can all pass through his little cursed bubble um, so he's thinking one Thor is going to show up he's going to be surprised when multiple Thor show up so when they show up boom you have him using the symbiote Malekith has the symbiote all over him and he is tapped into Null he, he knows what Null is he's aware of Null and uh, he's not afraid of Null and he's like all right well now I'm the butcher of Thors and then after we do this and we wipe out the world you know the universe is next to conquer um, and all the other realms are, are next to conquer Conquer. So, uh, so the battle is intense. The artwork's pretty good in this one. Uh, this is by Jason Aaron, but uh, Hepburn is uh, the uh, artist, Scott Hepburn, and he's the guest artist on this issue. And he actually does a pretty good job. All of this takes place like these, like this whole 20 pages or whatever is only like four pages in this book in, in issue six. So it's kind of nice to get this like fleshed out because I wanted to see Malekith with the symbiote fighting the Thors. I wanted to see more of it when I read issue six and someone was like, oh, you got to get Thor 14, 14. So I ran out and grabbed it first. And I was like, all right, now I can make my video because now I feel like I have the whole Venom arc storyline. So this is still the symbiote. We already know what happened to Eddie Brock. He's safe and sound. So now we are fighting and, and you know, for the safety of this symbiote. And Thor does kind of care a little bit, but not really. He's like, yeah, he's willing to kill the symbiote if he has to. Uh, but he also knows the suit's being used against its will. So he's, uh, you know, pulling back a little bit. Uh, but then even Freja, so the Venom suit comes at Freja and it's ready to eat her. And she's like, no, I, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And that's when young Thor comes in, strikes uh, that suit with lightning and separates it from Freja, and then uses the power of Thor to become worthy. And he actually lifts the hammer to fight back all the monsters and fight back the symbiote. Uh, so yeah, boom, look at that. Young Thor, uh, who was like, you know, he's headstrong, he's, he's rage filled, um, and he's, he hasn't learned any lessons that Thor has you know throughout the years uh, but now he saw Freja, his own mother about to die and he says you know these are people who loved me when I was always in the wrong especially when I was in the wrong they always loved me and they fought for me to be a better human being or a better person um, you know and, and to be worthy of you know to be a successor to my father and uh, I always fought them along the way because you know he's like an, a ch you know teenager uh, years I guess his version of teenager years and uh, so at that point he's like you know what I'm I'm sorry mom and dad I, I've let you down my whole life but uh, I'm not gonna anymore and he picks up that hammer and he brings the back Battle, right to Malekith and the Venom symbiote. And last but not least, we have War of the Realms number six. And uh, in this book, again, it's just battles. It's just nonstop fighting. Uh, the way Jason Aaron does it, it's really, really good. But it wraps up all the other stuff that we've been seeing. So you have Thor attached to the tree and then breaking off and then, you know, gathering the four of them and then going through time to collect all the Thors and then going into battle with Malekith. So you see a little bit of behind the scenes of how that happened. Um, and then you get this great spread here with the four Thors. Uh, which is just so sweet. Uh, this I thought that was awesome. Um, but then you have some frost giants getting killed by Captain Marvel and her troops and Frank Castle and everyone in New York. And then Laufey decides to eat this little you know, like jewelry box thing. It's like this gold box that will um, uh, that's destined to like destroy all of Midgard or freeze all of Midgard. So he eats it and then he's able to breathe this ice that can just freeze entire cities all at once. And so he eats it and he's trying to use it and he's trying to freeze everybody. Uh, but all the heroes are fighting back, including Matt Murdock. He says, have at thee, son of Jotunheim, in the name of Hell's Kitchen. And you have Daredevil running in with a sword, Heimdall's sword, to fight against uh, Laufey. Um, and then you have Malekith here with the symbiote, uh, you know, setting up his plan. He's at Stonehenge. He's using the symbiotes to hold down, uh, you know, Thor's father and mother. 
and then the four Thors show up and they get into their battle. And again, the battle's not very in depth in this book. It's only a couple pages, but uh, to see it fully fleshed out in Thor number 14, I highly recommend picking that issue up if you want to see the full battle because uh, it's pretty awesome. And then again, you know, you, you're seeing Thor uh, worthy and Mjolnir shows up. It falls from the life tree and he says, you know, it, um, you know, Malik is like, no, this can't happen. You know, uh, now that the suit's been separated from him, because young Thor picked up the hammer and knocked out uh, Malekith, tore the suit off of him, and then uh, he actually gave the Thor, you know, the Thor hammer back to All Father Thor. He's like, hey, you can have the hammer back. I lifted it one time. You have it back. I need my axe because I want to cut all these things to pieces. So he starts chopping up the Venom symbiote, you know, trying to beat it into submission. Um, and then, uh, you know, Malekith is taken down and Malekith looks at Thor and says, no, you can't, you're not worthy. How did uh, Mjolnir get here? That was the whole plan, you know, all my plans you know, to separate you from it. And all these, you know, these things I've done all over the years that have made you less worthy. Um, how can you do this? And that's when Thor goes, you know what? I'm not worthy to lift Mjolnir, but I am the God of the unworthy. And and now this hammer is tethered to the unworthy. And so he somehow, you know, uses that, I guess, to pick it up. And meanwhile, while that's happening, uh, Laufey gets his eye plucked out uh, from his head because um, and Matt Murdock throws the sword. It bounces around Laufey and Laufey's like, you throw like a blind man. And then the sword comes back, cuts him in the face. And then at this moment here, someone threw... Um, you know, this big uh, hammer right through his eye. And he's like, wait, who threw that hammer? And it was late, you know, Lady Jane, uh, Jane Foster. She took her hammer from the war, uh, Thor, and it had one less, one last throw in it. Uh, one last blow that it could do before it would just, you know, destroy or return to its realm or whatever happened to it. And she throws it across New York and goes right through Laufey's eye. And then Laufey turns and he's like, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm just going to release this power. I swallowed that gold box. I'm going to release the power now and wipe all of you out. And that's when his stomach cuts open and Loki, who was swallowed in issue one, cuts his way out holding the gold box uh, in hand. <laughs> just super, super awesome stuff. So yeah, this book and this this run has been amazing. I thought it was fantastic. And of course, Malekith at the end, he summons his dogs, but his dogs sense fear. And all the heroes are like, look, we're not afraid of you anymore. The only one who's afraid here is you. And when Malekith realized that, it's too late. And his dogs and his creatures all chew him apart and kill him pr uh, probably once and for all. I have no idea. Because uh, it's comic books, everybody comes back. Uh, but yeah, so everyone's saved. The, the whole world is saved. I like this line here where Frank, uh, you know, Wolverine's like, Frank, let me buy you a beer. Uh, can we at least enjoy the end of the war for five minutes? And uh, Frank says to Logan, he says, look, your war may have ended, but mine never does. You know, he's still going to go out there and kill every piece of crap on the planet that he can. Um, so I can't wait to see more of them and Savage Avengers together. That's going to be so much fun. And then Doctor Strange comes to Matt Murdock's aid and he says, hey, are you all right? And Matt Murdock says, you know what? I, I, It's like going blind again. I had the ability to see and I lost my sight. I had the abilities of a god and now those are gone too. He's like, I think I just need to go to church and pray for a little bit. Uh, he's just like, I'm not, I'm not okay, actually. So I hope some of that has uh, ramifications in the Chip Zdarsky Daredevil book, uh, because I really like that book, and I'd like to see more of this explored there. Um, and then at the end here, you get a little moment of Venom symbiote saying, you know, like separating, it's pulled itself back together, all the heroes are gone, and it says, you know, dark magic, it healed my broken mind, so I'm not no longer, I'm no longer tethered, I guess, to Null in a way. Uh, so now I got to get ready. I got to get ready for Carnage. Uh, I can sense him coming. So it looks like that sets up uh, Venom in the suit very, very well. Lady Jane calls for her hammer, the Warhammer, to come back, and it actually doesn't disintegrate at all, or it kind of does, but it disintegrates around her arm and makes like some kind of gauntlet out of her uh, on her arm. So I'm curious to see where they go with that one as well, uh, because there, she's going to get her own series where she's like a Valkyrie. So I'm guessing that's going to come into play on that level. Um, and then you have the Thors talking to each other at the end. Uh, you know, the All-Father Thor talking to the younger Thor and being like, hey, you know, I wasn't sure if you should have been recruited. You know, you're very brash. You, you're me when I was young. And I was I, when I look at myself back then, I feel like I was a fool. But you prove that you're no fool and that you've always been uh, the good man that you should become. Um, and I'm glad you've become it sooner now uh, because uh, maybe that'll change our history uh, to some degree. And it, it kind of is like a connecting bonding moment with the two of them. Uh, and then meanwhile, you know, Loki's like, you know, the, the, the king of uh, Jotunheim is dead, long live the king. So it looks like he might go and rule Jotunheim together. It shows like all these, all the nine realms coming back together, uh, you know, finding some level of peace after this whole war. And, uh, and then at the very end, you have Thor and his father, Odin, talking. And Odin says, you know what? I should have been calling you this for a while now, but you've definitely earned the title. So uh, I'm going to kneel before you as your servant. And you are now known as All Father Thor. So this is the beginning of 
his because Jason Aaron when he started writing Thor it was like three timelines it was young Thor who was like in the Viking days um, then it was like present day Thor and it was all father Thor who was at like the end of time and so this is the hint putting him on the path of becoming the all father Thor um, so yeah so it's just Jason Aaron trying to put like these little buttons on his run of course the next person who writes Thor after this is probably going to go in a completely different direction and probably eventually things they'll write and other writers will write will retcon this stuff but it is a nice bookend if you've never read Thor before if you're you know you haven't checked out any of the books I would highly recommend the Walt Simons and stuff but after that I would definitely say Jason Aaron's run has been fantastic but it's not over this is just the beginning as it says here in the corner uh, the, this series may be over and we may have reached the end of the War of Realms, but, uh, you know, actually Thor has another book coming out called King Thor. And King Thor, number one, it's going to be like a four issue series. And it's uh, it's with Isad Ribic, who was the person, the artist who drew uh, Jason Aaron's first Thor book. Now he's coming back in September of this year, 2019, to put an end on this Thor run with Jason Aaron in King Thor. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. And you see actually Loki back there and he kind of looks like the God Butcher. Uh, so symbiote looking as well um then you see the valkyries and everything so uh, i'm excited to see i can't wait to read the end of this run uh, but for you guys out there if you are a fan of venom i say pick up war of the realms but if you want to give thor a good shot pick up all the jason aaron stuff if you can find it on you know print or in digital whatever it is whatever's cheapest for you whatever you can afford i highly recommend it it's a fantastic run all right, and that is the end of this long video. The last video I think we did was like 37 to 40, you know, 37 minutes to 40 minutes. And it looks like this one is too. A lot to talk about. I mean, this was a big book. It had a lot of Venom stuff in it. And I have the codes, the digital codes for all these, uh, but I will give those out in a future episode. And I also have some digital codes uh, from our friend Lonely Symbiote. Uh, she sent me a couple digital codes for some random recent uh, Venom books. So and maybe in the next episode and the ones after that, I'll start giving out those codes in every episode uh, for the time being, you know, for hopefully for the next like 20 20 or 30 episodes. If I give out one code an episode, we'll have enough to get us all the way to probably episode 400. Uh, there's a lot of codes. So I'm going to write them all down, get them all ready, and uh, they will be coming out in, in future episodes very soon. So thank you. Let me know what you think of this. Did you read War of the Realms? Are you a fan of the book? I really was. Overall, I got to say for an event book, which I'm not a big fan of a lot of event books typically from either company, uh, Marvel or DC, even when indie companies do it, they're not always that good either. I don't know what it is. I feel like everyone just like loses their ability to tell stories when they do event books. Uh, but this was actually really good, I gotta say. Um, I would give this book overall, The War of the Realms, I would give it like maybe a three and a half to four out of five. Uh, that's how much I liked it. And all the Venom stuff, uh, the stuff that Cullen Bunn did, especially that gave it a big boost because all the moments they had in there with Eddie Brock were fantastic. And I highly recommend it if you're a Venom fan, which I'm sure you are because you're watching the show. But let me know what you think down below of this. Did you read it yourself? Did you not? Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts down below. And we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.